sure to check out Ageless Geeks for your figures and collectibles. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 18 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts Avengers Endgame Armored Thanos. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at the box. So just like with the cat figure we do get the newer design box for this armored Thanos. So we do get the window right there in the front of the box and on the window in blue does say SH Figure Arts. On the bottom we do get the Avengers A symbol says Thanos Marvel Avengers Endgame Tamashii Nations and Bandai. And then here is the bottom of the box. We do get an image of the figure. Then we do get the warning and blah, blah, blah. So if nobody cares about it, and then here is the top of the box. And then one side. And then the other side, we do get the Tamashii Nations quality sticker on the bottom there. Then the back of the box here, we get a couple of cool poses. You can get the figure into along with some of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure over to take a closer look at this armored Thanos. And yes, I'm saying his name correct this time. Unlike last time when all of you kept teasing me about how I said his name. You bastards. <laughs> Alrighty, to get a closer detailed look, and Tamashii Nations did do a fantastic job with this armored Thanos. The one big main thing that I'm not too happy about, and I know other people aren't as well, is that it's not accurate because he does have the Infinity Gauntlet on. And spoilers for those of you who have not seen the movie yet, but he does not wear the gauntlet, and he doesn't... He... He does wear one, but he doesn't put it on this hand, and it's not even this gauntlet here. So, they at least should have included an interchangeable arm, or they should have just showed us that he did have the gauntlet, but then, after everyone saw the movie, he should have just been included with a regular arm like that. So, we're really not too happy about that. It's it's totally inaccurate, but that, to my Nations, uh, usually is inaccurate with a lot of stuff. So, that does definitely suck. I mean, it is cool that he does have it on, so... Uh, I could definitely roll with it, but I, I would have preferred how he looked in the movie. But um, the head sculpt and the helmet look great. I love the way the helmet turned out. The face sculpts look just like the other ones. I believe they're all the same ones from the uh, the, the non-armored Thanos from, um, from Infinity War. Very nice sculpt and paint on the face and the eyes both looking in the same direction. I do wish that they added like a, a wash or something on the gold for the armor. I think that would have looked nice. That's my own personal opinion though. But I love the tiny sculpt detail all throughout the armor everywhere. On the neck looks pretty cool where the black meets the, um, the gold right there. Just all the tiny sculpted lines and everything look really cool on this figure. Really dig the way the armor turned out though. We got a little bit of armor on the shoulders there. We get his gauntlet on his right arm which looks pretty cool I, I dig the way that looks and then we get the infinity gauntlet on the left one and it's more of like a um say like a bronze than a gold the uh infinity war one was more goldish this one's more bronze i believe this one's more accurate i don't i don't really remember i need to go back and, and watch infinity war to see which color it really was but it would have looked nice if they added a wash on it i do like how they made all the infinity stones a translucent plastic just the one on the thumb is not, but I, I really dig the way the gauntlet looks. And then the back of the armor looks pretty cool. His loincloth is a soft, rubbery type plastic, so it will not hinder leg articulation there. And then the legs here look pretty good. We get some nice sculpt and paint detail throughout them. Very clean paintwork throughout this entire figure, though. Definitely a big plus for that to, uh, to machinations. Then the lower legs here with the boots look pretty cool. Very nice looking. So, I mean, it's just so plain looking without, like, a wash or shading or something like that. And then the feet turned out pretty good, too. And the bottom of them, nothing going on at all. But, overall, Tamashii Nations did do a, a very nice job with this armored Thanos. Yeah, they could have added, like, a wash or something on the gold to bring out the detail a little bit more. And I would have preferred them to have the figure look more accurate to how he did in Endgame. But... Uh, overall, they did do a, a nice job with the detail if you ignore those things. But anyway, let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories, this armored Thanos is pretty much included with the same stuff we got with the Infinity War Thanos. This one is just also included with his meat cleaving sword there. But what we do get, we do get three interchangeable faces. And starting on the left, we do get the basic stern face, which is the face that does come on the figure out of the packaging. And these are all the same faces we got with the Infinity War Thanos. Then in the middle, we do get the like smirking type face. And then finally on the right, we get my favorite, the angry teeth gritted face. And these look exactly like how Thanos does in the movie. It's so realistic. It's kind of creepy looking, looking at them 
like this, not on the figure. And we do get some very nice sculpt and paint detail throughout all three faces, and it's very easy to swap them out. I'll show you how to do that right now, quickly. And swapping the faces on this armored Thanos is pretty basic when it comes to SH figure art. So what you have to do, you have to slide off the front of his helmet there, then pull the face off there, take the new face. We do have a peg, and it does have a peg hole on the top of the head right there, and you just got to peg that in like so and then slide the front of the helmet back on and then there you go as simple as as that and for those of you that are curious you can remove the helmet there take the unhelmeted head from the infinity war thanos and it fits on there perfectly fine and i actually like the look of this a lot more compared to the helmeted version and if you want them holding the helmet just remove the face from it and then just connect the helmet back on like why am i having trouble doing this what the schmack there we go and you could have him like holding on to his helmet or something like that so if you have both figures then you do have more display options between the two figures whatever i'm just gonna have him hold it like that but we do get the three interchangeable faces and then we also get his double-edged meat cleaver sword and this thing it just comes apart right there so it's easier for him to grip onto so that's all you do there. But I mean, it looks pretty cool. It is a little dinged up here. So you can see he's been in a few battles with it. But I like the design on the blade there. And I like the silver that they chose for the blade. It just looks like a, a meat cleaver, doesn't it? <laughs> the handle looks all right. Then the other blade uh, looks the same as the one blade there. This one's a little dinged up as well. But it is a pretty cool looking weapon. And he does grip onto it perfectly fine. So we do get that. And then we also get six alternate hands. And starting on the top right here, we do get a pair of fists, of course, which do come on the figure out of the packaging. And then below those, we do get a pair of open hands, but his fingers are a bit clenched, as you can see there. And these are the same hands we got with the Infinity War Thanos. I wonder how many times I said this throughout the review, and we'll continue saying it. And then all the way on the left here, we do get a left open hand for the gauntlet hand. And then the bare hand, we do get a right gripping hand, so we can grip onto his meat cleaving sword but all the hands they are easy to swap out the only issue is the entire joint likes to pop off with the damn hand all the time and it gets so damn annoying because it always does it i mean the hands are easy to, to take off the ball peg but it, the wrist joints just keep sliding out the entire hand and popping off with the hands but we do get some very nice sculpt and paint detail throughout all six hands but anyway, that is all the accessories included with the Endgame Armored Thanos. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? Now, for the height of the Mad Titan to the very top of his helmet, it looks like he's about 7 inches and 3 quarters of an inch tall. And then there he is compared to the Marvel Legends evolution of Groot, the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Thanos, the Infinity War Hulk, and the Dragon Ball Super Full Power Broly. And as you can see, he is a tad bit taller compared to the Infinity War Thanos. And then here he is compared to the SH Figuarts, Endgame Captain America, the Mark VII Iron Man, the Infinity War Black Panther, and the Infinity War Thor. And then here he is compared to the SH Figuarts, Infinity War Black Widow, Captain Marvel, the Homecoming Spider-Man, and the Volume 2 Guardians of the Galaxy Star-Lord. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Smoke, the SH Figure Arts Sage Mode Naruto, the Mefex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And then here he is compared to a character who would have helped Thanos gather all the Infinity Stones so he could see how strong his opponent could get, the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku, and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and we kind of get similar movement to the Infinity War Thanos compared to this one. This one, I, I don't really like his articulation as much. Some points I do prefer more on this one compared to the other one, but overall I do prefer the Infinity War articulation over the Endgame Armored Thanos articulation. Now, we do get two joints at the neck, but the way his armor is around the neck and his helmet, it is going to hinder a lot of movement. I'm just going to show you both points at the same time that's the furthest up you're going to get him to look right there because it, it does get hindered it does look down a little bit better so that's all right you do get pivot at both the upper and lower neck the lower neck you get better pivot as you can see there and then of course you do get swivel at both 
joints as well, but you can't spin it in a full 360, which I don't know why you would want to spin a character's head in a full 360, but I'm just saying it, it's going to get hindered. You can't get it any further than that to swivel. Uh, now we do get a point of articulation at the torso, at the abdomen, and then at the waist there. The abdomen goes forward and back a tiny bit. doesn't like shift up or anything like that. A little bit of pivot, and then very slight swivel. The waist here, forward and back a tiny bit. So with both joints, he crunches forward that much, goes back about that much. A little bit of pivot at the waist, and then you get better swivel at the waist there. Now the arms here, this is the articulation I, I do not like on the figure. We do get a butterfly joint, but the way the armor is, it's kind of useless, but you do get a nice circular motion out of the arm, and then the arms do go out to the sides a little more than 90 degrees. They do go up and down. We do not have true bicep swivel, and I feel like that prevents you from doing uh, a lot of good poses with the arm with this figure here. This is the point of articulation I am not happy with at all. I know the Infinity War didn't have it either, but you were able to get better movement because the armor was not in the way. So if you want to use swivel at the bicep, you will have to use it at the shoulder there. We do have double joint elbows that do bend in a little more than 90 degrees. Then the wrists here, they're on a hinge, of course a ball hinge, so they do swivel and hinge back and forth, and you can shift the joint out a little bit, so you can get the hinge a little bit more. So definitely cool, and that's like that on both hands. And then the legs here, they drop down just a tiny bit. And Thanos kicks forward about 90 degrees with that joint. Goes back just a tiny bit. Let's see if he can Jean-Claude Van Damme it. I don't think he'll be able to. And the legs go out about 45 degrees, so he cannot Jean-Claude Van Damme it. Then we do get a tiny bit of a hip swivel. It really doesn't move too much, though. Uh, we do have single-jointed knees that don't meet 90 degrees, really. And then... You do get swivel where it connects into the lower leg. doesn't really swivel too much where it connects into the thigh there. And then the ankles here, they do swivel. The armor does get out of the way around the ankle for the swivel. They don't hinge up too much. They hinge down really good though. And you get some pretty good ankle pivot for the size of the figure here as you can see. So not bad ankle pivot. Then you do get a toe hinge that completely breaks his toe apart but overall but overall this figure does have some all right articulation like i said i prefer the infinity war thanos articulation much more over this one but you're still going to be able to get this thanos in some good end game armored thanos like poses and i'm about to show you some of them right about now but anyway, that is my review of the SH Figyards Endgame Armored Thanos. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure between a 1 through 10, I'd have to give it an even 8. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I did get mine from Ageless Geeks. Not sure if he still has any more in stock, but you can always check at agelessgeeks.com. If you can't find it on there, I do recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, oh well, I guess you didn't like it, but thanks for watching. I will see you later. Here we do get a few cool potent little little and blah blah and blah 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 Thanos, the Infinity War Hulk, and the really the SH Figyards and Game Captain Ashmerica. His opponent would be the SH Figyards. I forgot what he was called. Thanos is pretty much included with the same stuff we got with the blah 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 blah. Thanos is pretty basic when it comes to figure arts. So, yeah, I believe he had a thing to